If you invested just a couple of grand into crypto during 2020, you would be a millionaire. See, the reality of crypto is that many people have made millions, if not billions, very quickly. And this leads to new investors overlooking some of the harsh realities of the crypto space, leads to something called hopium. Just believing everything is always going to be great in crypto, it can't go down, it's only gonna go to the moon. So with the crypto market reaching new all-time record highs, I thought it was important to talk about some of these things that people glaze over, forget to mention, and seem to overlook with coins like Cardano, Solana, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and many more. Also, we are continuing to add new spots to the Patreon community, so make sure to grab one of those before they fill up. In addition to benefits like daily live streams, um, exclusive content, you'll also get access to our buy and sell alerts, which have yielded many of our members returns of 1,500%, 1,300%, 300%, and more. Right now, Bitcoin and the entire crypto market is breaking out. We are seeing it set to reach new all-time record highs. If we look at the total cryptocurrency market cap, excluding Bitcoin, Bitcoin. We have seen that we have finally broken above that $1.5 trillion market cap for the entire altcoin market. This is huge. This is showing that we are about to break out. We are about to see all-time record highs into 2022. And in addition to this, in terms of technicals, things are also looking great as well. Plan B, the creator of the stock to flow model recently came out. He spoke about how August he predicted 47K was worst case scenario for Bitcoin. That was on the dot correct. September 43K was his prediction. That was exactly what happened. And in October, his prediction was spot on as well. He predicted $63,000 per, uh, per coin for Bitcoin, and it was at $61,000 per coin. Now he's predicting 98K and 130 35k um, for the next couple of months. So right now, the overall crypto market is looking extremely, extremely good. And this leads to many people just overlooking some of the potential issues with many cryptocurrencies. Everyone just only looks at the positives. And yes, I'm very bullish. I think we're going to reach new all-time record highs. It's important to realize some of the potential downsides. So we're not surprised if prices ever drop or if prices are stagnant. So the first one I wanted to talk about is card Cardano ADA because a lot of people own Cardano or they have over 1 million followers on Twitter and it's a coin that I am personally extremely bullish on. Recently, in terms of positive announcements, they've had a lot of stuff going on with Africa, new partnerships there, new partnerships with Dish Network, and a lot of other major developments in the NFT space and with their developers. But a couple of issues and a couple of things that people overlook are going to be first is that Cardano was late to the smart contract party, meaning that they didn't release their smart contracts until late 2021. And this gave other projects like Solana, like a number of other um, projects, time to develop and build out their ecosystem while Cardano hadn't yet released their smart contracts. So while yes, they have them now, the problem with this is, is that they're still lacking in terms of development on the ecosystem. They have less projects than a number of other major um, cryptocurrencies, like let's say Solana, and they're a little bit lacking there. The other just potential downside, potential issue for Cardano is in the NFT space. Right now, they are lacking in NFT um, marketplaces. Their biggest NFT marketplace is cnft.io, and it is not as user-friendly as Solana NFT Network. It is not as... Um, it's not as user friendly as OpenSea, which has Ethereum and Polygon NFTs. So really, Cardano has two potential issues in my mind. One is that they were a little late to the smart contract party, so it could take a little bit more time for them to develop that, gave other companies time to build out their network. And the other thing is in terms of NFTs, they're a little bit lacking there as well. Most people buy either Ethereum or Solana NFTs. Second coin I want to talk about is going to be Solana. Solana is a coin that I am personally very, very bullish on, and it's a coin that we've talked about a lot on the channel. We've talked about it ever since it was at $8 per coin. We talked about it for the first time in about January or February of 2021. One of the big issues with Solana um, in the future is with regards to decentralization. Many people, this is the biggest concern about Solana, but many people overlook this. And what this just means is that simply put, 
The more decentralized a blockchain is, the less it relies on a central point of control. And many people, that is one of the big upsides to cryptocurrency. That's not, you know, that it's decentralized. There's no one person or one company or one government in charge of it. It is decentralized. With Solana, though, there are 1,161 validators on Solana, which compared to other blockchains, let's say like Ethereum, is very, very small. Ethereum has over 200,000 validators, making Ethereum significantly more decentralized than Solana. So while I am bullish on Solana, this could pretend, uh, present a couple of issues in the future. Other thing is, is we recently saw that Solana had to restart its entire blockchain because there was a crash. It was overloaded with too many transactions per second. And last thing with Solana that could be a potential issue is just that Solana, if you look at how much is owned by insiders, 48% of Solana is owned by insiders insiders, which is pretty high. And if you look at the public sale, which was like pre-launch sale or and all of that, only a very, very small percentage. This is the percentage in the blue right there. Just a small sliver was allocated to the public sale. So right now, a significant amount of insiders own Solana. And the other issue in the future could be with regards to decentralization. That is just potential issues. Like I'm a very extremely, I'm extremely bullish on it. It's just important to know, you know, what are issues in case something ever happens because you don't want to be blindsided by anything that happens in the market. You want to make sure you're aware of both sides of the story. Next thing I want to go over is going to be with Ethereum because Ethereum right now has seen a dramatic increase in price. And with that, gas fees have also gone up as well. And that is the biggest problem for Ethereum. Ethereum gas fees have risen 2,300% from June to October of 2021. That is absolutely insane. And what this means is that it's discouraging a lot of people from actually investing in Ethereum NFTs because these gas fees are too high. People do not want to spend 50, 60, 70 dollars for one transaction when buying an NFT when they could just go ahead over to Solana or use Polygon or use something else and buy two NFTs without worrying about that you know, crazy, ridiculous gas fee. So that is a big problem. Yes, we are seeing that ETH 2.0 is going to make Ethereum more energy efficient, going to help reduce some of these issues, but still, gas fees are always going to be there for Ethereum, and even if ETH 2.0 rolls out, it helps reduce this. As Ethereum gets bigger in the future, we're still always going to see that gas fees can potentially come up and be an issue depending on how many people are actually using the network. So that is a big issue, and it's deterring people currently from moving away. So yes, still, like I said, love Ethereum, but that is something that I've personally experienced with my own NFT collection. It's something that many people have told me and many people just don't like Ethereum for this very reason. And then lastly, with one of the biggest, most promising uh, cryptocurrencies out of all of them, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the largest cryptocurrency. Largest cryptocurrency. Most institutions invest in it if they invest in crypto. But the big problem with Bitcoin is how much electricity it is consuming every single year because it takes so much electricity, so much energy to mine Bitcoin. And this has become a major, major concern across the entire financial world uh, with governments around the world. This is a big issue. So, um, while I'm extremely bullish on Bitcoin, entire crypto market, like when we see that, for example, Bitcoin energy consumption is just continuing to increase at almost an exponential rate, something just to be aware of. Yes, there are alternatives to mining Bitcoin with more renewable energy resources, let's say like solar or some other energy source or um any other way. But it's important to keep in mind these potential issues in case things pop up, in case the market hits and it you know drops significantly, in case some news comes out with one of these cryptocurrencies. It's important to always know both sides to any crypto you're invested in to be an educated investor. You don't want to have blind faith, blind hope in the project because then it leads to irrational decisions, um, irrational investments. You want to be rational with your investments. And to be that, you need to know both sides to the story. So anyways, I just want to point these out, not to discourage anyone, not to make anyone upset, but just to say, look, if you're invested in a project, you want to be a rational investor. 
you need to know both sides to any story. So just treat this video as like information to be able to educate you in your decisions. Hopefully it makes you like opens your eyes up a little bit more to the crypto world. Let me know your thoughts though. Um, but make sure to guys um, to follow me on Instagram. A lot of scammers have been there recently because scam accounts have significantly more followers than my real account. So I'll link that down below. Um, but I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you guys in the next episode. See you guys.